Hey guys, welcome back for another video. This one's gonna be short and sweet. This is the extension and hopefully conclusion of the test I'm doing on how to apply your thermal paste on your new Ryzen CPUs. Now, if you watched my build video, you saw I did just a normal P amount right in the center of the die, and then we let it spread. We're gonna see what it looks like. I haven't had the cooler off to see what kind of coverage it got, but I did take some before temperatures I did a 10 minute loop of Cinebench and we got a max of 80 degrees. Now this is a heavily tuned and optimized system. It's running an all core overclock of 4.65 gigahertz at 1.275 volts. So it maxes out at 80 using this liquid cooler. And at idle, it's just over 34. So we're going to swap it and I'm going to do a complete coverage, just a normal smearing all around the die. We're going to put it back on. I'm going to let it go for a while, give it a couple heat cycles, and see if the temps change at all. I don't expect any more performance, but just want to see what happens, if anything, to the temps. I don't know if anything's going to change. I've always had good luck with the normal P application, but we shall see. It's quick and easy to do. i got a bunch of thermal paste left here. I've got MX4 on it right here, and I've done tests between the different thermal paste, and I have never seen any meaningful differences beyond just normal error between the types. I've got Arctic Silver here. I've got some TG7 from Thermaltake. I've even got some liquid metal left. I'm not going to be using that on this. I use that for delitting. But I've tested the MX4 against specifically the Arctic Silver 5 and found them to be absolutely identical. So that's what I'm going to be using. And we'll see what happens. First, let's pop this off and see what kind of coverage we got. I'm curious. And real quickly, before we do that, I want to check the torque on these just to make sure. I'm not a fan. I'll tell you what, I'm not a fan of these screws they use in this cooler. They are very small, and unless you have the perfect bit, they want to strip really easily. So make sure you've got a perfect fit in there. I want to make sure that I've got full torque on them. Sometimes they can loosen up, especially if you have significant spread, and it creates a little bit of a gap after it heat cycles a few times. I do prefer the very large thumb screws with a deep cross thread in there, or a uh, cross slot. Those are a lot more secure. All right, now let's pop it open. So first time coming off, let's see what we have. Lift it carefully straight up. It's just a back plate. What do we look like? Well, that's not bad at all. It's a little thin. But as far as coverage goes, we've got edge-to-edge -edge contact. Same on the plate. So yeah, just a little thin there in the center. But I'm happy with that. I'm not expecting any truly different results. If we saw blank spots, if we saw just a big circle that meant coverage didn't extend to the edges, then I would expect definitely to see a difference. But this looks pretty good. And it could just be that the center of the die there was a little domed and we didn't have the need for quite a thick contact patch in there. But we do have spread all the way to all four sides of the die. All right, I'm going to clean this off and reapply. So I always use a good terry cloth, non-shedding cloth to clean off my dies and always use a good strong alcohol. You're starting off here with a general coating. That is roughly twice the amount that I used before, just in the solid P. And now I'm just gonna use this little plastic card here to spread it around. And that should give us a nice test bed to see any kind of difference. So as you can see, surprising results even to me. We have roughly a three degree drop both at idle and max load just by changing how the thermal paste was applied. So I upped the amount a little bit and spread it out. If you've just done the P-drop, I strongly suggest you reapply. And if you're doing a new build, I strongly suggest you apply it using the heavier and spreading method for best performance, at least on your new Ryzen CPUs. That's it. See you next time.